darling, darling, you're beautiful, gotta keep your head up, never let anything bring you down. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for midweek yoga. I hope everyone had a great week and weekend. We're all fresh and ready to learn a new sequence tonight. Um, as usual, your props would be your blocks on either end, a blanket or bolster or both, depending on what you may need for Shavasana. And we will begin. Um, the subject of our yoga sequence um, is based off of um, a code of conduct, if you will, or self-conduct, self-practice um, in one of the five um, limbs of yoga. So if you imagine uh, yoga has eight levels or eight limbs, the niyamas is all of the codes of self-conduct and self-practice. And Ishvara Panidan, the subject of today's um, sequencing, is really um, one of the most important, I think, as far as a niyama is concerned. And it's really about letting go, um, sort of surrendering and giving up to the divine giving up to the universe, giving up to yourself, allowing um, peace and tranquility and maybe a little bit of contentment and what we call santusha to come into the body and come into the breath and to come into the being. Um, and who doesn't want that? So um, maybe some of the things we learned from last week as far as feeling those emotions in our body um, will allow you to understand what that feels like and then through a breathing technique that I'm going to teach you, a pranayama, a energy-inducing breathing technique um, called Ujjayi, it will help you perhaps lower some of the sensations of uneasiness and allow you maybe to trust um, not only in the energy that will be brought to you through your breath, but also in your body and the movements of your body. And we'll just see how that goes. Hopefully you can start to feel the essence of letting go a little bit. And maybe you'll let me know after the practice. You'll message me and let me know how well it did for you. Um, so um, we're going to start in a, an interesting or a different sort of seated position. Um, there is two ways to do it. One is what's called a hero's pose. So we would sit with our legs a little bit apart and we would kind of sit onto the floor. So what's happening is it's sort of flailing out the, um, the calves and you can even move some of your muscles around to get in there. Now for me that doesn't really work for two reasons. One, I have space between my buttocks and the floor and it's also pulling and giving me a drag on my kneecaps. Um, so that's not a comfortable spot for me. Um, so hero's pose. Narasana is not my ideal. If it's something that you want to try or you feel you're almost there, you can certainly take a bolster and put it behind your calves. You can even put it long ways or maybe even a block lying down might be comfortable for you. For Jasana, which is Thunderbolt pose, it's very similar and definitely more accessible for me. And that's a typical uh, meditation posture where your feet come together and you actually just sit back on your heels. Again, that does cause a little bit of drag on my knee, even though I am connecting with my body on the floor. So what I like to do is, again, one of two things. I'll either take my blanket and sit there, but sometimes that starts to cause pressure as well. I can take my bolster, tuck it behind my knees. And that gives a lot of um, space to sit. It sort of evens out the playing field for me. Another way of doing it is we are going to be going through some motions on our knees. I like to take a block. And again, knees are together. And I just open up my ankles just enough to fit the block in there, tall. And then I can just kind of sit like a little stool. I'm not putting any pressure on my thighs. There's less draw on my knees, and it's just a more comfortable position for me. If that feels too high for you or you feel unsteady, you can always lower it. And sit there. It's cool too. All right. So, without further ado, I'm just going to face you. And you're going to face the front of the mat. 
can you say for me? I'm just gonna kind of set myself up here in my Narasana Thunderbolt pose. I'm actually gonna go a little bit taller. I'm just kind of settling in, maybe allowing the eyes to close and listen, if this posture just doesn't feel right for you or it's okay for now, um, and you wanna convert and sit in your Sukhasana, your cross-legged easy pose, go right ahead. Um, it will work just as lovely and I'll give you um, just a little bit of changes. But for now, we're just gonna settle into our breath. Maybe take a nice deep cleansing breath through the nose, release through the mouth. Nice little inhale again through the nose and exhale through the mouth with a sigh. Just kind of shaking off everything leading up to this moment. When you're ready, again, we're just gonna slightly close our eyes or if you wanna find a gaze in front of you, that's fine too. And to start the ujjayi breath, I wanna imagine almost that we're blowing um, fog onto a mirror, except we're gonna do it with our mouth closed. So instead of, we're gonna be doing it through our nose with our mouth closed, and it's gonna sound something like, and when you do that, you'll notice, and if you don't notice it, you can make it happen, a little constriction in the back of your throat, almost towards the roof, towards the palate. And as you breathe in, try to keep that same constriction and breathe out. The key here is to keep it as smooth as you can and as long as you can. We want to keep the inhale and exhale the same way. So it's really just a beautiful wave, just like a wave comes up on the shore and it leaves just about the same amount of time and space to do that inhale and exhale. We're gonna practice that for about eight breaths. Maybe the hands are on the thighs. And we're just slightly closing the eyes, coming in for the inhale. You don't need the breath to be too exaggerated. It doesn't have to be super loud. In fact, a lot of practitioners, my teacher, one of my teachers speaks about how it should just be a silent ocean breath that only you can hear. Let you feel that passage of air coming through. And maybe just start to notice if you can loosen your jaw, start to loosen your eyes, and each exhale, Maybe just another little part of the face starts to relax. The ears drop down, the shoulders drop down. And as you're continuing with your ujjayi breath, not focusing too much on filling up the belly or pressing into the air right now. Maybe just start to think of something that happened today that maybe you need to let go of. Maybe there's something perhaps um, in your week or your weekend that has come up and you just really would love to surrender. Maybe it's just the state of the place that we're all in right now and just trying to find a way to allow, let go or release in our body so that we can come to some sort of peace or a state of mind that brings us less stress Knowing that this ujjayi breath can support you, you can trust in it throughout the practice to calm the body, to bring you into a very light focus, and to experience the letting go through the qualities of this breath, which is a stress-reducing and a blood pressure-reducing method. It also detoxifies the body. When you're in a particular position today, or we're doing through, we're going through a sequence. Maybe when the breath comes, and I remind you, I give you the breath cues, you can think about that. Just feel the release off the position. When you're ready, the eyes can open. And we're going to practice those ujjayi breaths on our inhales and exhales. So the first inhale, we're gonna come up on our knees, arms are gonna rise. We're gonna really have nice energy in the arms. So that means elbows are straight, fingers are really energized, pointing towards the ceiling. 
We want to keep those shoulders dropping back. Remember, we never want to have them up by our ears. So that's going to be your inhale. And then your exhale, you're going to sit back down. And you're going to come with cactus arms or goddess arms for your exhale. And again, those are going to be super powerful arms, almost like you're making muscles, but your palms are open, fingertips are active. So let's do five of those rounds. the arms come down, going into an eagle pose with our hands. So I showed you this last week, but maybe there might be a better method for you. The right arm is going to go under the left arm. So again, stay in your seated pose, and if you need to switch positions, that's fine. We want to sort of tilt the tailbone, make sure that that's pointing towards the ground, maybe bringing up our pelvis getting into a strong torso here. So we're not just kind of sitting here. We're really engaging the torso almost like a cam, sort of really straight and upright. And the chin draws back, but nothing is tight, very loose. We're gonna take those hands and we're gonna cross the right hand under the left. So right now your palms will be facing your face. And then you're gonna take your right palm and you're gonna turn it outwards, away from you. And you're going to try to take the tips of your middle, and maybe those other thing, surrounding fingers, and grab that fatty part of your thumb behind the thumb, the palm. And once you have a nice little grip there, maybe the fingers curl a little bit. I know a lot of people that can go straight up and hold that. For me, it's pretty much there. That's all I can do. And now we're going to just turn the hand. So now that outer edge of the left hand is going to be facing outwards. And that right hand is going to be pressing in to that left thumb area. We're going to lift our elbows. Without scrunching our shoulders, we're going to go for five breaths of Ujjayi here. And the gaze can be right there at the center of your forearm. As we breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in, breathing out. And as we breathe in, notice how the back bone, the back rib cage opens up. Maybe lifting the elbows a little bit higher for a little bit more challenge. On the exhale, drawing in the belly towards the backbone, really keeping that nice tin can of the torso upright, making sure our jaw is loose, hobbling the head a little bit. And finally, on the exhale, releasing, shaking it out. I'm going to do another lift up of the inhale, really stretching up, stretching, maybe reaching up the fingers, loosening up that hold we just had, lowering the shoulders, and then exhale, coming down, really strong arms to our sides. And let's try it on the other side. So this time again, we're going to now cross the left hand underneath the right. Palms are facing towards your face. Left palm is going to turn out as you grab that thumb, that meaty thumb pad of the palm. And then turning that right hand so the right edge of the hand is facing outwards. Raising the elbows, starting our Ujjayi breaths, count of five. Try hard not to lift up the shoulders, but lift up the elbows. Drawing in that belly on the exhales. Just focusing on the breath. On the exhale, arms come down. We're going to lift one last time. Nice extension, wiggle out the fingers on the inhale. And on the exhale, come down. 
Very good. Okay. You're going to move out the blank, uh, excuse me, for the blanket. You're going to move the block out to the side. And sometimes I like to put it right behind my right hip. So you'll be putting it behind your right hip, maybe flat on the ground. Nice stable, or maybe just behind you on your mat. And then we're going to put our hands to the right, and we're just going to flip out our legs so that we're sitting on our right hip. We're going to take that right leg, and we're going to put it in front. We're going to bring it at a 90 degree angle from our body. And maybe this left knee is just going to slide right behind that right ankle. Flexing that left foot behind us. Flexing that right foot. Now, if this isn't comfortable for you and you want to just stack the legs, that's fine. Just keep the feet flexed. And then we're going to reach behind us and flat, flatten the palm on that block, maybe, as a nice stabilizing. Flexing the feet, we're going to inhale again through that ujjayi. Exhale, turning to the right. Left hand comes down to the right knee as we exhale, using that pressure of the left hand to the right knee and those strong flexed feet. Just breathing in your five breaths over the right shoulder. Arm is straight. If it's too high and too much pressure, having that block underneath, you can move it away. And just use your hand flat on the ground. Again, on the exhale, sucking in or allowing the belly to draw in towards the tailbone. On the inhale, finding that lift, the crown up to the ceiling, finding your length. And on the exhale, maybe going for just a little bit deeper into that twist that you're holding. When you're ready, inhale, arms rise up and the feet extend out in front. Arms come to the left hip now as we lean on the left hip and circle our legs to the other side. So again, the left leg is going to be almost at a 90 degree angle, foot flexed. Right knee is going to come right behind that left ankle. I'm going to flex that foot. If you want to move your block over to the left, behind the left hip. Putting the hand, fingers facing outward to the back of you. You're going to inhale, rising up on that ujjayi. Exhale, coming down with the right hand, looking over the left shoulder. Going for our five ujjayi breaths now. Notice if it feels different on this side versus the other side. Keeping the feet flexed and engaged. Shoulders down as much as possible. Maybe loosening the head, relaxing the jaw. As we enjoy those nice cleansing ujjayi breaths. Feeling the twist within our bodies, really wringing out and cleansing the kidneys. And when you're ready, inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, feet extend out in front of you. You can put your block off to the side or in front. We're going to come into Dandasana pose. So that's an inhale where the arms rise up. Feet are flexed. They might even come off, or the back of the heels might even come off of the mat because we're going to be lifting our knees. So super engaged pose here. So inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, we're going to press in. You might even be able to lift your buttocks a little bit off of the mat. You can also squeeze the glutes for a nice active pose. The gaze is going to go between your toes as you begin your five rounds of ujjayi breath. Feeling the calves engaged, feeling the thighs drawing up towards the body. Again, maybe those glutes are engaged, arm muscles are engaged as you press down, shoulders down, relax the jaw, relax the eyes, and on the exhale, release. Coming now and just grabbing our knees, from behind our knees, we're going to come into butterfly pose. So butterfly pose would be your soles of your feet together, 
you decide how far you need to go in order to have a release there. I also very often, even if it's not a recline or sorry, a um, restorative pose, I will put some blocks sometimes and we're gonna grab at our ankles. So again, you can come in or out as far as you would like. We're gonna do some cat cows in a seated position. So our inhales will look like this. So we'll be pulling on our ankles, the chest rises for that inhale, that ujjayi inhale. Really stretching out the back, lowering the shoulders, maybe wiggling it out a little bit. And then for, for this is a cow, and then for cat, we're gonna arch our back. The shoulders kind of draw forward. Back goes back. Maybe that pelvis tilts forward. The head comes down as we exhale. And again, maybe there's a little movement on your exhale. Take it nice and smooth, nice and slow with your ujjayi. Really try breathing into each part of your body, your toes, your knees, your hip creases, your chest, your shoulders, and then exhale and out the top of the head, up the tips of your finger, tips of your toes. Really feeling the air leave the belly. A couple more times. the breath even. And if you're ever cold, even though we're heading into the summer, that is a great practice to warm your body up. Um, you can actually do that at a faster pace and that will start to warm up the body. It's really magical. Alrighty. So again, putting any props off to the side. We'll be facing the front of your mat. We're going to pick up our knees and plant our soles of the feet on the mat. And we're just going to kind of lean back onto our hands. Now, if this feels right for you, you might be able to bend, I'm sorry, pointing the fingers towards the front of the mat. You might be able to bend those elbows and lift both feet up off of the ground. If that feels good for you, we're going to start to lift legs, one, down, two, down, just right and left, alternating, and maybe try to incorporate that ujjayi breath. So, starting to warm up the belly, even though we're going slow and smooth and long, just trying to extend. Now, if that's not working for you, it's okay to keep your one foot planted. And just try to get as big of an extension as you can. You might come up a little bit in the body. That's fine too. When you're ready, we're going to meet back down here. And now we're going to try to extend the legs. So again, if you're down here and that's not within the practice, you can move your, like, your hands a little bit closer. Give yourself a little bit more leverage. Maybe a little bit further back feels good. The idea is we're trying to balance on um, our sacrum. Once we get those legs up, if they're up, <laughs> we're gonna try to maybe lift our hands up to the sky for both pose. And we're gonna go for five ujjayi. Ready, begin. Again, the gaze can be between the front toes. Maybe things start to wiggle, the energy that you're producing with your pranayama. It's shaking mine up. Drawing in that belly on the exhale, keeping that core nice and tight. And I don't know if we're at five, but I'm ready to release. Crossing my ankle, we're gonna come up and rise to table. Okay, while well, we're in table, you might wanna just wiggle it out a little bit. You can do a couple of cat cows here on your own, just to get that spine nice and loose and ready to start our down dogs. And we're gonna do our down dogs with the bent knee to begin with. So 
So if that works for you, that would be wonderful for you to get into that bent knee down dog position. So that's curling the toes, keeping the knees bent and just leaning that belly on there. And we're just gonna come down for a count of three, just to start warming up the body. And I'm on the fourth, we're gonna lift up, hips to the sky, drawing the heels towards the back of the room, head drops, maybe a little outward rotation of the elbows, really feeling the hips lift, belly tucking in. Maybe we walk the dog just a little bit. You wanna go back a little bit further. That's fine too. As we lower down and check our down dog distance through a plank. So high plank is always gonna show you your true dog distance. As you exhale, hips rise up. Again, heels are going towards the back of the room. Maybe they're hitting the mat, maybe they're not. Tilting that pelvis, breathing into the belly. We're gonna come up on our toes, lifting that right leg up to the sky. We're gonna exhale to the nose, knee to nose, three times. And on the third time, we're gonna take that right foot and we're gonna plant it on the outside of our right hand. It's gonna kind of look like you're lunging. And we're gonna come down on that knee. So left shin comes down, foot is flat, pressing the toes of the foot into the mat. Start to exhale and just come down a little bit, really opening up that hip crease. So the right knee is going to the right a little, keeping that foot firmly planted flat. Coming back on the inhale, straightening that right leg. So it's almost like a runner's lunge. I like to put my hands to either side of my leg, flexing my foot, really drawing the leg back from that heel bone. And then again, exhale, you can come forward with the hands in front. Inhale, come back. Exhale, come front. Maybe try your ujjayi here if it's working for you. Planting the hands now in the front. We're going to curl that left toe under and lift that knee. So we're going to get some gas in our tire. As we put the weight in our front hands, we're gonna lift that right foot, sweep it back into a three-legged dog. Now, if you feel comfortable coming up on your left toe, great. If not, and it feels better with your heel down, that's fine. As long as you're getting that extension, you can even point your toe. And then we're gonna bend that knee. And when we bend, we're gonna almost open it up. So we're almost bringing that right hip to the left hip but we're trying to keep the balance in our hands, keeping that stability so that the left hand isn't taking all the weight. We're sharing it with the right palm. Opening up that hip, bringing it back, placing the foot back down to down dog. Now for the left side, left points up, coming up on our toes, knee to nose, exhale two, Exhale, three, that left foot is again gonna to come to the outer outside of the left hand. We're gonna bring that right knee down, flatten the top of the foot, get some nice stability on the toes of the right foot. As we exhale, bringing that leg back for runner stretch. Inhale, you can come forward. Exhale, runner stretch. Maybe engaging our ujjayi. Now we're gonna curl those right toes under, lifting that knee, getting some air in our tires, putting some of the pressure onto our right and left hand. We're gonna lift that left leg, bring it up to the sky. Maybe coming up on our right toes, really nice extension. 
bending that left knee, bringing it back without putting too much weight. Sometimes my right foot pivots a little bit when I come back. That's fine. You can try to straighten it out. Back up some sky, bringing the left foot to meet the right for down dog. Just taking some breaths here. Really allowing the ground to absorb all the energy. But while you're still giving back to the earth energy, you're taking from the earth energy and that's coming up in your hips, rising up through your legs. When you're ready, you're gonna look to the front hand. You're gonna take that right foot high. We're gonna step it between the hands. Left foot joins the right. Halfway lift. Shining the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, springing up for Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. Exhale, Tadasana. When you're ready, inhale again for Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold. As we start our sun salutations, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hand. Step back the right. Step back the left. Nice inhale, right before we exhale and we lower our knees, our chest, we scoop our chin up for low cobra, our little back bend. Exhale, we're gonna curl the toes, rise for down dog, come up on the right toes, lifting the left leg, exhale, placing it between the hands. Inhale, the right joins the left as we come up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Let's go. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, shine the heart, little back bend. Exhale, hands plant down. Right foot comes back. Oh, sorry. Left foot comes back this time. Right foot joins it. And we lower for Chaturanga Dandasana, or knees, chest, chin. Coming up for low cobra, high cobra, or upward dog. Engaging those knees, coming up the tops of the feet, curling the toes, rising back for down dog. One more round, right leg up, right leg steps forward, left leg meets it. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, springing up, exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, a little bit of lift. Exhale, hands plant. Right foot steps back, left foot steps back for that inhale on plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, cobra. Press up, down, dog. Or you could do a chaturanga. Going for the left leg now, rising high, stepping forward. Right foot joins the left. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, all the way down. Halfway lift. Hands plant. Left foot, right foot. And I'm gonna do my Chaturanga Dandasana, so I'm gonna bring my elbows into my chest. Slowly lower down, scooping. I'm coming up for my upward dog. Exhale for my downward dog. All right, you're good. We got our sun cells in order. When you're ready, we're gonna look to the front. We're gonna bring that right leg up. We're gonna step it between the hands, but we're gonna plant that left foot back. We're going into warrior two. So we want those toes pointed to the upper left part of the mat, planting it down. We're gonna push up, windmill the hands, open to the left side. Right hand comes forward as we lean into that right knee, bringing the right towards the right, holding that pose, warrior two, for three ujjayi breaths. Checking in with yourself as you're going through your breaths, maybe trying to draw the thighs together, getting a little bit of action and tension in the feet, really working the leg muscles. 
Maybe scrunching out the toes and getting a little lower in your pose. Checking your arms, making sure they're in alignment. As the left hand comes down, the right hand comes up and over for warrior, excuse me, peaceful warrior. And we're gonna do three Ujjayi breaths here. Again, notice the feet planted. How does the skin feel? Focusing in on those breaths. Next exhale, we come up for warrior two. And we're going to straighten that right leg, pivoting forward, reaching for that right thigh with the right hand, excuse me, right chin with the right hand. Left hand comes up for triangle pose. Couple of breaths here. You'll be going through your Ujjayi breathing. Keeping it smooth, keeping it long, keeping it even. Bending into that right knee, hands plant in front of the foot, stepping back to down dog. Just a couple of breaths here. Coming up on the toes, left foot rises, steps in front, planting that right foot. Windmilling up for warrior two. You guessed it, we're gonna hold three here. Loosening out the jaw, making sure there's no tension. Chest is high. Nice bend in the knee. Making sure the soles of the feet, the skin is nice and flat. Coming into your peaceful warrior for three Ujjayi breaths. Coming forward with a straight leg in the front, reaching that left hand down to the left shin, outwardly rotating that elbow. So we can open up our chest and reach for the sky. Maybe the gaze is going towards that thumb. Maybe you'd like to engage in your ujjayi breath. Also maybe feeling that sensation of drawing the feet together even though they're apart on the mat. I remember always taking that hip that's up, drawing it forward and down. It allows the chest to open up a little bit further, almost leaning back into your triangle. When you're ready, you're gonna bend that knee, plant the hands, step back to the down dog. Going for another side, we're gonna take the right foot up. Plant that left foot, coming up into warrior two. Except this time, we're gonna turn our palm up to the sky. We're gonna take that left hand and bring it to our hip. Really get nice and low, bringing our right knee towards the right, palm up. Settling in here. I want you to imagine that thing you want to let go today. I want you to imagine that it's right at the center of that palm. We're just gonna kind of focus in on that with a couple of Ujjayi breaths. Next time you're ready for your next exhale, I want you to throw it over like a peaceful warrior. And then I want you to come back and it might still be there, I want you to throw it over and come back. Throw it over. Really feel that push of the legs, getting the whole body to open up, almost feeling some resistance like we felt in the beginning with our cactus or our goddess arms. Really feel the resistance, active fingers, throw it over. One more for good measure. All right. Excellent. Next time we throw it over, we're gonna pivot the feet. So the toes are gonna to be pointing towards the left. The right hand is still over the head. The left foot now is gonna to pivot towards the back of the mat. The right foot is gonna pivot the heel out. So we're in warrior two facing the other direction. 
bending into that left knee, taking our forearm onto the left leg, straightening out the arm for a nice extended side angle. We're sending that thing away, it's gone. Let it go. Taking some Ujjayi breaths here. Again, taking that hip bone, bringing it down, allows us to really turn and open up that chest. As if the left rib cage could come up to the ceiling. Nice strong arm after that let go. When you're ready, we're gonna sweep down. We're gonna walk our fingers back to the front of the mat. Hands are framing that right foot. Stepping back to down dog. Just taking a couple of breaths before we go to the other side. Lifting up on the toes, left leg comes up to the sky, stepping forward in between the hands, planting that right foot up. Rising for our warrior two. Lift the palm, really get in there. Sense maybe that same thing is still lingering or maybe there was something else that you wanna let go of on this side. Maybe you're letting go of the letting go. When you're ready, after a second cleansing breath, on the exhale, that right hand is gonna to come to the right hip and we're gonna exhale and throw it over. We're gonna come in and Exhale and throw it over. Really pushing off of the legs, opening up the side bodies, reaching energetically through the hands, finally settling over. We're gonna point our toes towards the right side of the long part of the mat. The right toe is gonna to point to the back of the mat. The left heel is gonna hit, sorry, hit it back. Bending into that right leg, Taking the right forearm, leaning it on down, and throwing out that left hand, throwing out, letting it all go. Extended side angle. Turning that right rib cage maybe up towards the ceiling. Woo, using our ujjayi. When you're ready, come on down, walk it around. Hands frame that front foot, toes pointing towards the front of the mat. Hands plant down, step back for downward dog. And take it down, knees, child's pose. Really enjoying those nice cleansing breaths now. Maybe just falling into a natural breathing pattern. Feeling what that sensation is in your body of being able to let go, be able to come down. Maybe it was a little exciting. Maybe it was a little nerve wracking. Just enjoying that beautiful child's pose. When you're ready, rising up to table, table up to down dog. We're gonna look between the hands and we're either gonna hop or step up to the front of the mat. I'm gonna step up. We're gonna inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale for a forward fold. I want you to really bend into the knees. The seat is gonna draw towards the back of the mat. And I want you to almost feel like you could balance without hands, your chest on your thighs. You're gonna reach out your hands in front of you as far as you can, strong arms, and you're gonna rise on the inhale, almost like a little mini back bend sitting in your chair, Utkatasana. Just exhale, settle in one more breath. Inhale, push through the legs, rising up into Urdhva Hastasana. Very good. Exhale, swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Come back up. 
to upward salute. We're gonna take our hands into prayer. We're gonna bend those knees like we're sitting in our chair again. We're going to twist to the right. That left elbow is coming to the outside of the right kneecap. You're gonna be pressing into your hands for that twist, feet are together. Pressing in, lifting that left rib cage, not allowing it to collapse. Practice three, five Ujjayi breaths here. Pressing in, maybe the gaze comes up to the ceiling as you get further in your twist by pressing your hands towards each other. Opening up that rib cage, really allowing the buttocks to sit back. Sometimes that left knee comes forward a little bit for balance, that's okay. Next exhale, we come forward. Hands come up to chair. Now we rise up to Urdhva Sasana. Shake it out. Hands are going to come together from Urdhva Sasana to heart center. Going to strike that same pose, sitting back in our chair. This time taking the right elbow to the outer edge of the left knee. Maybe that right knee comes forward a little as we press in and turn our gaze up for a revolved chair. Exhale. Really practicing those ujjayis. On the exhale, coming back. Hands come up for chair. As we inhale, slowly come up to Urdhva Hastasana. Arms come down, shake it out. When you're ready, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, one last shine of the heart. Exhale, hands come down. Stepping back to downward dog. If you want to take a vinyasa, a little knees, chest, chin here. You want to just come down for child's pose for just a moment. That's okay, too. And then we can just meet in our downward dogs. Right foot is going to step up to the front of the mat. And this time, the left foot is going to come a little bit closer to the right. The toes are gonna to be pointing to the upper corner now of the mat in warrior one. As we rise, sinking into our knee, hips are forward on our train tracks. Arms come up, slight little back bend for warrior one. Chest rises, nice lift, a nice tin can of the trunk of the torso. Hands come into prayer here. As we turn towards the right and come down one last time with our left elbow to the outside of our right knee. Pressing into the hands, you might decide to lift up that back heel. Maybe get a little more balance. Practicing your ujjayis, looking up, turning up this rib cage if possible. Using some furniture. When you're ready, exhale. We're going to come back out. Push onto that leg. That's going to be a doozy. Lifting the arms up and lowering into that leg for our last warrior one on this side. Exhale, hands come down. Step back to down dog. Take a couple of breaths. Take a vinyasa. Take a knee. Coming up on the toes, lifting the left leg, bringing it up front, settling that right foot back for warrior one, feeling the balance, making sure your train tracks are nice, hips are straight, pointing in front of you, arms rise up, warrior one, the gaze lifts a little bit, chest rises, just feeling that nice slight back bend, hands come to prayer, as we turn to the left now, taking that right elbow, Bringing it to the outer edge of the left knee. Foot comes up if you want, pressing it in. 
Letting that gaze come up for your revolved lunge on this side. Really opening up, feeling that torso turn. Nice twist, wringing out the last bit of toxins. Practicing those last couple of ujjayis. When you're ready, look down at that front foot. Rise up, your last warrior one. Hands come down, frame in the foot. Step back down, dog. Knees for everyone comes down this time into child's pose. Couple breaths here. Again, just maybe falling into a natural breathing pattern. Need to get a sip of water like I just did, please do. This will be your time as we get further into the warmer months, which is when we're recording this, um, we're probably gonna need more water breaks. <laughs> so feel free to start to know your body, start to know how that feels, so that you can stop and get your water break. Coming out of child's pose, going on to table. We're gonna sit back again on our knees. So that means that you could possibly bring in a prop. My recommend is to go for the block if you have to, but keep it, keep it at bay for a moment because we're really just gonna be rising up on our knees. Now this could also be a great time to put a blanket on your knees because we'll be there for a little bit and it tends to put a little pressure. I like to keep my knees as close together as possible, feet close together which is why having that block there might not necessarily work. We're gonna go into camel. So camel is a back bend. We're gonna go for a really modified one, nothing strenuous or crazy. If it's in your practice to reach back for your heels, you might wanna bring your holes of your toes to get the heels a little bit closer to where you need them. Uh, that could be an opportunity also to put a block there where you could grab the block if that feels comfortable. But to start out, we're just gonna take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale. Okay, next breath. We're gonna bring the arms up. And on the exhale, hands come down and we're gonna pretend that we're putting them in our back pockets. So the palm of your hand is gonna be right at that crease between your back and your buttocks. Maybe getting the hands to splay support with your fingers. I want to slowly start with a nice inhale, and on the exhale, slowly start to lean back. Maybe you just stay right there. And your goal is to loosen that throat. See if you can get a nice ujjayi. Engaging the thighs, drawing them towards the center of the body. Maybe you feel super excited or curious. You're so ready to let go that maybe the hands come and they find the heels, the fingertips. We open up that chest. We start to use the hands and the feet as leverage. Start breathing and opening up the throat and letting go. Pressing the hips forward, but not too far. When you're ready, Come back to support your back. Slowly rise. Might be a little dizzy. So we're going to come down on our heels. That was my knee saying hello. We're going to put our hands in front. We're going to come into our puppy dog pose. So if you remember, that's a little bit further out than table. We're keeping the thighs at a 90 degree angle as much as possible as we bring our chest down to the ground. Maybe our chin touches the ground. If not, bring in a prop. And just feel that really nice additional back bend. Couple of breaths here.
When you're ready, slowly rise up. Oh, we're gonna take it one more time. So coming up on the knees, having them join together, really pulling the thighs together at the center and starting to, I don't wanna say jut the hips forward because we're gonna be supporting our backs. So just a nice little push forward. Maybe the belly draws in. Again, your choice to come up on your toes and reach for your heels, or maybe just go easy this one. Or maybe because the last one felt so good, you're like, yeah, I'm going for it. I'm gonna let it go. Just keep breathing. Really feeling that ujjayi, that beautiful energy, the pranayama passing through your throat. You can feel it coming into your chest, your belly. Maybe even your thighs are joined together. Feeling that lift and openness. And when you're ready, exhale, coming up out of your camel pose. Getting back down on those heels, reaching out for your puppy. And you're allowing the whole top of the body to collapse into the floor and start to settle in. And come back up to table. We're gonna just hit that right hip again like we did going into our exercise. Our practice. Bringing our feet forward. Coming into that butterfly pose again. Again, if you need to feel a little bit more supported and you want to bring in your props, this is the this is the restorative part of it. So you might want to take your pillow, get it in there. We're gonna reach up. We're gonna exhale and fold over the legs. Maybe holding on to the toes. Nothing stretching, nothing really exerting. Just allowing the body to flow down, to melt, to really allow that back area, the full sciatic area to open up. Imagine that your right hip is drawing towards the right. And your right knee is drawing towards the right. And opposite of that, your left hip is drawing towards the left. And your left knee is drawing towards the left. And almost feel how naturally the butterfly just opens up a little bit more. Maybe on your next inhale or exhale, you start to elongate and move a little bit lower, a little bit forward, or maybe you just relax a little bit more. Again, not allowing the shoulders to scrunch up. We're going to have the right shoulder draw to the right, the left towards the left. Drawing that crown forward and down. Taking in our last few ujjayi breaths here. When you're ready, slowly rise up. Moving your props out of the way. Maybe getting them set up for your shavasana. It's coming very soon. And just taking the right leg out to the side. We're going to take that left leg and we're going to draw the sole of the left foot to the inner right thigh. Again, drawing that tailbone down, pivoting a little bit on the pelvis. We're going to turn towards that right leg. On the inhale, lifting up. Exhale, we're just going to slowly try to come over and fold over that right leg. You might need those props. I should have told you that to just kind of slowly go into your fold, allowing the crown of the head to draw down and forward. Couple of breaths here. Going into that last couple of ujjayis. And 
maybe as you breathe, it's almost like the wave of your ujjayi breath allows you to inhale and come forward and exhale and relax and come a little lower. And then the inhale and the exhale is almost like a wave of the body. As you lift and rise and move forward and exhale down. A couple of more breaths and stillness. When you're ready, pressing down with the palms, lifting the body up, moving over to the other side, taking the legs to the front, just for one quick stretch, taking that right sole of the foot, pressing it against the inner left thigh. Not too exaggerated, opening the legs, it's fine if you can only get so far. Turning the body, pivoting, making sure that we're stable. Inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, we fold and come over. Beginning our ujjayi round breath. Feeling the wave. Keeping that left foot flexed. Maybe breathing into any last tension that's in the body. Any last tension that might be in the mind. As we get ready for Shavasana, we prepare to truly let go like the waves in the water. We scoop things up and we let them go. Ready to come up now, pressing into the palms, coming up. Getting ourselves set up for Shavasana. Maybe you've got a little roll of a towel under your head. We're going to extend our legs out to the bottom of the mat, letting the heels draw towards that base of the mat. We're going to slowly start to roll down super slow, one vertebrae at a time. Maybe bringing in some props to go under the legs, backs of the thighs. As we start to come into that last maybe ujjayi breath, just kind of think about a couple more breaths of it before we finally take one last inhale through the nose, out through the mouth, releasing all the tension, letting everything go, dropping into the floor. Feeling the release and the letting go, starting from the toes to the middle of the foot, to the backs of the heels, the ankles. Maybe the calves start to draw down, backs of the kneecaps. Maybe the tops of the knees and the thighs. Did so much work today. Really doing a great job of just letting it all go through the breath. Allow the hips to draw down, back tailbone, middle bone of the back, maybe the upper back, starting to feel the blades broaden as the shoulders drop back to the floor, the upper arms, elbows, forearms, and maybe the hands splay away from the body, about 10 inches maybe from the hips, palms are up absorbing all that delicious energy in the air, maybe releasing any last bits of energy that isn't serving our bodies. When we start to come back to the room, come back to your natural breath, maybe wiggle the fingers and toes, stretching the limbs, maybe the arms stretch above the head, the toes stretching out to the bottom of the mat, nice full body yawn.
start to roll over to your side, maybe take that last little fetal position, a couple of breaths. Feeling the sensation of your practice as you start to press into the hands, slowly rise, allowing the head to come up last. It's coming into a nice neutral seating position, something that feels comfortable, preferably eyes are still closed. Taking one deep breath in together. Nice exhale out. One more in. Exhale out. Maybe bringing hands together in prayer or hand over hand at the heart. Let it go. Let go of the ways you thought life would unfold, the holding of plans or dreams or expectations. Let it all go. Save your strength to swim with the tide, the choice to fight what is here before you now will only result in a struggle, fear, and desperate attempt to flee from the very energy that you're longing for. Let go, let it all go, and flow with the grace that washes through your days, whether you receive it gently, or with all your quills raised to defend against invaders. Take this on faith. The mind may never find the explanations that it seeks, but you will move forward nonetheless. Let go and the wave's crest will carry you to unknown shores beyond your wildest dreams or destinations. Let it all go and find a place of rest and peace and certain transformation. Bringing the hands now together with the thumb knuckles to the third eye. We bow in gratitude, thanking ourselves for coming to the practice, thanking ourselves for opening up to the curiosity and opportunity to let go. Most of all, thanking each other for being in virtual company together. I thank you for joining me this week and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bowing down with the words Namaste. And open your eyes. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. And I love you very much. See you soon. Darling, darling, you're beautiful. Gotta keep your head up. Never let anything bring you down. Sunshine will always come around. Stay strong, move on. You have such a beautiful soul. Let your energy radiate.